Starting so and we're live for recording purposes. All right. <clears throat> What's going on, everybody? It is Friday, August 24th, and you have reached the Pinwheels and Ivy podcast. I am your host, Matt Zawaski. They call me Zoe. And before we even get started, I just want to let you know because I love you all. I'm playing hurt, not injured, just hurt. But so great. Unlike uh, a certain middle infielder on this show, I'm probably not going to punk out. You're so tough. Yes, You're so I know. Tough. You're so Chicago tough. Chicago tough. Well, those two voices you hear are my co-hosts. Uh, first, we got Aldo Soto. What's going on, Aldo? Hey, man. Uh, David Bodie, still MVP front runner, since he's the only one who can hit not a solo home run for the Cubs, apparently. Yes, that is a uh, boom. Big thing, and then the other guy. Who man, I, I'm intimidated just to say his name after seeing that. Just that go on Twitter. That Donruss, Just look at it. Just, I mean, look at that guy. He's just staring into my soul right now. That's Matt Anuko. They call him Nuke. I call him yeah. Sir from now on. <laughs> <laughs> I got the pouty lips going. You do. You it's like that, the platypus. That's like a hard <laughs> blue steel in that pit. <laughs> the locks. Good oh. hair in that one. So drinking a nice red tonight. It's gonna be. I'm getting a little saucy. Is it full bodied? <laughs> yes, a full bodied young kidding, Nebbiolo. I just kidding. I don't give a shit. I have testicles. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. You, you, you so, also have to tell the audience that you have a fantasy football draft. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. because of bad timing on my point, on my part, we usually record on Thursday nights. We're recording on Wednesday night now because of travel, and I actually had a fantasy football draft scheduled for the exact time that we're going to record the show. So I'm going to draft during the show. It's actually a sports mockery league. It's uh, six guys from sports mockery Vegas versus four of us here in Chicago. And I got a shitty draw. I got the ninth pick. It's 10 teams, which makes the team a little bit better. Suspiciously low. But I will also um, update you guys on my fantasy team that none of you give a shit about. So I have a microphone and you will listen. Um, but back to baseball, we have an absolutely loaded show. A lot going on in Chicago baseball this week. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to get into Copic Day, treading on Twitter for like seven hours. Like, Woo! I mean, that's it, that's just seven way. hours? A lot of buildup for a couple of days. We came out Sunday. We had two days. <laughs> Mm. Two days to prepare for this thing. Right, what a tease. I know, just two innings. And then it was electrifying. We're going to get into some sadder news. we got some major injuries on both sides of town. Mm. And yeah. then we're going to get into the Cubs' new second baseman. Uh, we have a couple great interviews lined up for you, so then we're going to switch over to there. And then all three of us are going to yell at each other about – uh, sliding hard into second. I like it. Yeah, no, I think it's good. I think we're going to be uh, a little bit different on that one. So it's definitely <laughs> going to be a good show. Again, I apologize for the voice. I'm drinking tea while we're doing this. He's Lil um, Wayne. He's yep. feeling syrup. Don't worry about what's in my cup. That's my cup. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so we got a great show. So with all that being said, draft has started. Todd Gurley just went number one. Let's tap this guy. Breach. Oh, God. So, Copic Day. Big, huge buildup. Everybody going crazy. Hashtag Idiot Copic frenzy. Day. The 108 boys were retweeting people drinking all over the country, watching Copic Day. Everybody's juiced up about it. Kid comes out, and I'm going to say he kind of – he lived up to expectations, gave up two hits, had runners on the corner, no outs. Then got his first strike out and then two pop outs to get out of the inning with no runs. Then he came out in the second inning, struck out the side, showing a lot of gas. He showed that 90 mile an hour changeup that had some filthy movement. He had a great slider working for him. And then God just said, that's enough of that. And uh, opened up the, the rain clouds and we got rained out. So, in a sense, as a Sox fan, I definitely feel like I got blue balls. 
Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was geez. like, I was juiced up for this. I was yelling at the TV, striking guys out. I'm flexing at the TV like, fuck yeah. And I was getting jacked up. And then. Was your shirt ooh, off? No, I was fully cold for this one. <laughs> you, uh, you, you were in any tighty whities He pitches again this weekend. You didn't get uh, to, I mean, <laughs> we need to see when he gets to the third inning what Zell will do. Right. And so. <laughs> I don't That's know. That's when the article of clothing comes off with each inning. Yeah, it was getting there. I was getting a little hot. It was getting whew. a little hot and heavy. So I don't know though. From my take, and I'm gonna turn this over to you, Nuke, because I know you were watching, and I just I don't know. I thought it was good from what I saw. I know it was two innings of work, but it looked like he was locating his uh locating his pitches. There was movements on his second and third pitches. It looked it was a good start. I wish it was a full start, but it was a good start. You know what? It was exciting. It was exciting because there's, it could have gone so many different ways. Because like you said, there was so much media attention for two days, you know, and even the White Sox were really building it up. And, they, and the kid could have came in and really struggled just because, you know, every it seemed like Chicago just kind of descended on the rate the pictures of the fans uh, surrounding the bullpen while he was warming up were like insane. It was crazy. Yeah. And, you know, everybody knew, you know, it. there's so many things to say here, but, you know, to, to, to really just summarize, is just what I like is that he went out there and he dealt with, with a little bit of adversity. He gave up a hit his first I, I, I think Mauer let off, right? And he got a hit. Second pitch of the game, maybe. Um, and he gave that up, had to pitch with a runner on base, like you said, got first and third, and worked his way through. Got a few strikeouts, rolled through. It seemed like he was in sync with with his catcher and the game plan with Omar Narvaez. And he just basically like, give me the ball, I'm going to throw it. Give me the ball, I'm going to throw it. Just put down whatever fingers you want, I'm going to throw it. I'm not shaking, I'm just going. And it was just, it was good. He was throwing darts, absolute darts in the bottom yes. half of the zone. He commanded that part of the zone. He got screwed on a few calls, but we have, you know, the K zone and the umpire doesn't. Mm -hmm. And you know what? He elevated, he elevated well. And I don't think he, he had, he commanded that part of the zone as well. I think it was a little erratic up there. I think the ball kind of flew and sailed on him a little bit. He starts to his major league starts that the you know major league hitters can get up to that ninety eight mile an hour fastball up in the zone and foul it off and stay stay alive in the in the at bat. So he wasn't able to blow the doors off of him so much. But what was so impressive was the ability to elevate that fastball and then come back and spike a curveball. And not just spike a 58-foot curveball, but throw something hard that didn't mm -hmm. pop out of the hand, that induced swings. I mean, you just see it happen, and you're like, wow, that's Verlander. That's Max Scherzer. That's what those guys do. Right. They can run that ball up in the zone and then drop a hammer down in the zone. And, he, and he's throwing it for strikes. Now, I don't want to get out of my, you know, get ahead of myself and say that, you know, it was amazing and wonderful and fantastic and he has nothing to work on. He worked some deep counts. He clearly had a lot of adrenaline. He was sweating like it was 120 degrees outside. Yes. But that's it. That's the thing. I, and, and I think the key for him was strike one, pitch one. If he doesn't throw a strike right there like that first pitch, the game could have gone completely different just based on adrenaline all the buildup. I mean, he's human. He's on social media. I'm sure he's paying attention to it. I mean, Vanessa Morgan retweeted one of our uh, sports mockery photos. So, you know, she's, you know, around it. Um, that is on it, you know, so it, it's all part of it, but it's not like he lives in a, in a silo and just kind of stay in his lane and just goes out and pitch, go out and pitch. He's, he's, he's into all the, you know, all the surrounding peripheral attention. So well, he's 22. Of course he is. Exactly. Right. And he should be allowed to. It just adds a little bit more of that pressure because there's so many voices in his, in his sphere. So oh, that first pitch, throw a dart, strike on 95 miles an hour. I thought that set the tone. No, I agree. And I thought it was pretty cool that uh, we also, the Pedro Martinez, 
criticism, which was very, very high. It wasn't criticism. It was more just praise. praise. Yeah. And the other praise that came in, and, and it was under the radar because it wasn't on TV and it wasn't someone that has like a, a big national audience and all this stuff now was somebody called Nolan Ryan and was like, called Hey, Nolan yeah, they, they called Nolan Ryan and they're like, what do you think of this kid? And he goes, I just watched those two innings. He's like, that boy's going to be something special. And I don't know about you. I love Pedro. If I had to pick an all time, like nineties, 2000 team, Pedro's my starting pitcher. But to hear that from Nolan Ryan, that made it move a little for me. I was like, <laughs> holy shit, that's Nolan Ryan. That's one of the best, if not best pitchers of all time. I was like, and it's a similar type pitcher where he's a power pitcher. Exactly. And Everything I was everything like, is juiced. Yeah. It, I'm gonna at you. It's it's a challenge kind of pitcher. He's not gonna finesse you around the zone. Eventually he will, but not right now. Now it's like, and he's got that bulldog mentality where he's like, let's go. I'm coming. You hit it. And I love it. And he, like you said, I don't think you could put it better than saying like he was throwing darts. Those were absolute darts. And it was, I don't know. It was just, it was, was so exciting, much fun to right? watch. Yeah. I was, was pumped. It was exciting. I was jacked. I was flexing at my TV screaming <laughs> when he was, when he struck out Joe Maurer, I hate Joe Maurer. He's I respect the shit out of him, but he's been killing my team for a decade. He's so good. <laughs> when he struck out Maurer, I stood up and screamed. My wife was sleeping, so I was trying really hard not to wake her up like the whole time. In your I, underpants. And I struck up. No, I had my Jordan mesh shorts on. And I, I stood up and I fucked. I just go, suck it, Maurer. <laughs> Fuck yeah. And I was so pumped. And I was just like, I gotta calm down, dude. This is the second inning of the kid's first start. But yeah. I don't know. But I I liked that, everything that's what it was all about, though, because like yeah. that was the whole, the entire buildup was. And I think in a general sense, you know, Cop or Copic finally coming up. It's like it's that next step. You get that feeling of, right, one step closer. We're one step yeah. closer. You know, we finally have like our number one, like our best pitcher, like yeah. our best pitcher in our in our in our team. Basically, mm -hmm. he's up here. You know. Now we have that that building, like that stepping stone. Yes. Like we have him here. We get to see him. We get to see that flash of like, you know, like what's, what's it going to be, like five, six starts? Or, or unless they shut him down with the innings. That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. But like you get he he could it. potentially get 10 starts. Mm -hmm. like you, that you, would be insane. He should. You see like that glimpse of what, you know, you'll get over a full, hopefully a long career on the South side. Mm -hmm. You hope so. And like you said, I mean, I, th I think that's perfect. There's a few things that just come to mind. One, it's like it's like having a shiny toy that you've been talking about and that your parents are like, we'll get it for you if you're patient, if you're patient, if you're patient, you know, you're just like, right. when am I going to see this thing, you know? And then it gets here and it's not like, oh, man, this thing better not be dull, you know, or tarnished or something. And it just like goes out and is like, it did it. It did exactly what you expected it to. And even more. It was only for two innings, but you know what else it does? It was like it was like an it was like a, an emotional release for I think White Sox fans, which they needed, and it's fantastic. And I think we've been saying it on this show since probably at the end of the All Star or at the end of the trade deadline for the past few weeks, past few shows, where it's like he's gone through his his troubles, he's lifted himself out of that, he's put some really good starts together. It's time, it's coming, and it came. Mm -hmm. So there was that emotional release there, but also, you know what it does? It has an effect on the roster. And I talked about it today on the Sean and Maya show a little bit. And they asked about it is like, what does this do for the rest of the pitching staff? Like Giolito Lopez, those other promising arms where it's like, all right, now I got to keep up. Or is it like, phew, you know, maybe this is like, okay, now I can dial in and not worry so much. Like the media storm kind of shifts a little bit over to Kopech. Right. And kind of gives them a little bit of like, now we've got three instead of two, you know, we've got these guys, Rodon's dealing. So now it's not so much, you know, like now I, yeah, I got to keep up. I know I can, I have the ability, but you know, I'm not going to get as much harsh, harsh criticism as I was going to get because now I have somebody to, not necessarily distract, but it's just another, it's like, okay, when you're, it's like anything else, you know, if you're a team of, 20 you feel a whole lot stronger than if you're like one guy on a team of 10 you know right so and the strength of numbers 
I think the biggest thing for me to watching this and watching him play at the level I, we were all hoping for and to me it 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 symbolized this is it this is the start of the rebuild like we can two three years from now when it's all good and everything's going how hopefully we all think it's going to be going you'll remember Copic day as that that was the day that was the day it all it all started and you know what I think you're going to have, especially for White Sox fans, is you're going to have a series of these days because yes. it was Moncada Day last year, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, Giolito and Lopez were a little less ceremonious. Um, mm -hmm. But you had those days, you know? Next year, it's going to be, you know, Eloy. That's going to be a big one. And then there's going to be Collins not far behind him. And then there's going to be, you know, Zach Birdie, and don't forget Alec Hansen, and exactly. don't forget Ian Clark, and, and don't forget Louis, you know, Louis Robert. So, you know, the 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 best part about this is that, you know, it's like a lot of other teams right now that are doing really well, like the Phillies, you know, when they started the rebuild. It's been this kind of like slog through the, the season trying to get back to something dominant. But that's the point of a rebuild is it doesn't always amount and equal to a World Series or immediate success or success by a certain date. It's that you've put yourself in the best position possible with the prospects you have to pad yourself against failure. And there, I mean, from what Kopech did, I mean, you know, his first 52 pitches in the major leagues, it looks great. It looks like what it's supposed to be. So I have a question for you guys mm -hmm. as I like go off on my own soliloquy. <laughs> um, what do the White Sox do next year? Talking about service time. Do they send him down for what's going to be? It's going to have to be a month, month and a half, to extend that year of control. Or do you just say that's it? Screw it. We're we're going with it. You're in. You're in. No, he's. I he. I think he's up for good. No. You think he's up for good? I I kind of feel that way too. Are you in your, are you in your draft mode zone? No, I just you cut out for a second for me. I couldn't hear oh. you. And yeah, so far my team is good. I got Adam Thielen, Jarvis Landry, Alvin Kamara, and Kareem Hunt. But anyways, <laughs> my team is stacked. Like, so are you sending Kopech down next year? Or are you keeping him up? I don't. So explain to me what's the benefits of sending him down? So there's a certain number of days that amount or equal to a, a year of service time it's like a hundred it's the same thing with eloy now it's just it would be you would save that time next year i guess right right so i think it, i think it's like eight days less than a full 162 game schedule i mean if if it means they get another full year of control i can easily see how i'm doing it this is one scenario where i just don't think he's gonna do it yeah no because I think if they, I think if they had that plan, I think they just would have waited until next this year. Was always, this was always a critical issue, with Kopech this year, because you sent him down to AAA to continue to develop and reach those benchmarks. It's kind of the discussion we're having right now with Eloy. Right. Is you know, it's a little easier. It's much easier with Eloy because you can say, well, he hasn't had enough time in AAA. We want to just you know let him get a full 50, 60 games there, and then you know we'll if he's does everything he's supposed to in spring training, then we'll hold him down for two weeks and bring him up, and it's an easy decision. But Kopex had that full year at AAA. He had a month at AAA last year. So, you know, I'm leaning, I'm definitely leaning towards, like, I don't think they th they send him down. Is it foolish then? Because you're not playing that game that, that you can play? I mean, literally, it's a month. They're still not, I mean, not necessarily going to be next year, Next, not necessarily is the year, right? Mm -hmm. We're more 2020, 2021. That's when like Robert will probably start to be up. Clarkin will probably be up or um, Dylan Cease, a lot of those names. So, board, right. you know, but, 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 you know, the White Sox also have that history of extending guys. Right. So are you so, okay though? So what if he comes out? So let me put it this way and then, uh, and then I'll shut up because I know I'm talking too much. If he does what he's supposed to do, if Kopech does what he's supposed to do and just go out and dominate, mm -hmm. 
for all of September. They let's say they shut him down after seven starts to keep his innings down, but he's like, you know, mowing him down. He continues that in spring training. He's clearly ready to stay. Do you hold him up and then extend him? You know, and and then when do you extend him? I think you hold him up. I think he he starts. I think I want to see a full season of him and uh, Radon as the one and two. You know what I mean? And in, in mm-hmm. this, and I also feel like, and this was a point that was brought up earlier. Um, <clears throat> if you if you hold these guys up for the service time and you bring them all up. Does that, I mean, does that necessarily mean you're going to have to renew their contracts at the same time? Could, yeah. Like, if they well, turn it out... depends to, on all the years, you know. If they turn out to be the studs that we all think they're going to be, that's going to be that's a lot concerned. of... That's going to be a lot of money. You know what I mean? When you got to do them all at once. So, maybe you bring Copic up now and you wait, you know, the couple of weeks for Eloy and then you bring him up when it's his turn and so you can kind of stagger those second deals the one thing that the white Sox have done in the past and that kind of mitigates that or solves that problem is that they extend and so right. you know they go beyond their six years of arbitration and all that and then you know it's so it's like what they did with tim anderson okay so so i mean but the, but the thing is so like even with chris sale like they lucked out with chris sale and they paid him, but they didn't. Pay, you know, they didn't have to pay him nearly what he's worth, and that's why, that's why they were able to get Michael Kopech and Yo Mankata. Right. So if he turns into this like Rookie of the Year <clears throat> type player next year, you know, when do you start having that conversation? Year two, I guess, year three. I so. uh, yeah, I guess it depends. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who his agent is. I guess it depends on that too. Because if it's, I mean, if he's a Boris guy, those yeah, guys never, extend. never, right? But I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't think there's like any Boris guys on on the White Sox. Hmm. There might be, but not yet. The time, then you got to worry about Super Two status, but that's really <laughs> negligent. The White Sox do not have a payroll issue, so it really doesn't that's matter. Yeah. That, that's a good point. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how they play it. Bottom line, Copic gave us a very brief glimpse of what it is he can do. And yeah, I got excited. It was I, awesome. have one, I have one thing. What if like the same thing you said, Nuke, he dominates, he shows that he's the pitcher that everyone that he's shown he's been in triple a um, and Rodon keeps it up. Like, do you think if though, like if those two keep it up, do you think that accelerates or do you think that changes anything in the off season for their like off season plan? Like, Hey, Let's be more aggressive getting trying to get a Machado, trying to get a Harper or something. Uh, you know, um, I mean, one, I think they got to be active in this yeah. free agent class. I think every Rick team already said he's, they, they're gonna have the money yeah. to compete right? or whatever. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I, th- I think. I don't think the pitching staff will necessarily dictate those decisions. I think it's going to be where's Jake Berger. You know, how far away is he? What what else do we have at third base? Or the, something that we can plug at third or short? Mm-hmm. And I mean, easily, you know, if you were, if, if, if it was a, if it was like a, a, a non-starter that Machado was like going to come and not play shortstop, then Tim Anderson can easily play third. You know, Moncada could play third. Um, <laughs> Nick Madrigal could play <laughs> any of those, but he'll never make it to the bigs because he's too small. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> jk jk um you know the but what came to mind when you were outlining that is who do you pay first who do you extend oh. first what if they will rodan because his day would be up sooner wouldn't it? right right and he's a little older mm-hmm. that's like then you get into that issue that's gonna be an interesting one because he has everybody the injury history too yeah, but he, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, segue, speaking of injury history, there was major injuries on both sides of town to keep things moving here. Uh, oh, Eastman just took Tom Brady. That's a shocker. Eastman still has his Patriots freaking starter jacket. Anyways. <laughs> Ooh, shots fired. Yep. He's probably watching live, too. It's all right. I'm taking Drew Brees right meow. 
Um, Should have taken Carson Wentz. Oh wow, Carlos Rodon is still he. Rodon's not going to be a free agent until twenty twenty two. Yeah, no, they got him. Oh, he. One is. thing that the White Sox do very well are contracts. They they've always done that well. They just don't pay anybody. But <laughs> <laughs> they don't. I mean, it it is what it is. But uh, back to the injury. So the big injury, obviously, that Cubs Twitter is definitely handling super rationally with a very level head, <laughs> as we all expected them to, is you Darvish is officially shut down for the season. He's he, not Chicago tough, apparently. No, he went for his rehab start, got yanked in one inning, and was it was it. It was game over for the season. The only thing I'm worried about, the only, I mean, it's fine. I don't want him. I don't, for any cut, I didn't get, there was the whole thing about uh, he should just pitch through it. I don't know why you want to do that. The Cubs, yeah. like the Cubs, signed him to a six-year like deal. That That's that. Like yeah, that <laughs> six-year deal isn't going away. Like I no. don't like he, they set the Pam. So try to get the most out of him for that rest of the contract. Um, the only the only thing I'm worried about is if he needs like Tommy John again. Which right? Has he had it already once? He's yes. had it. Yeah, he's had it at least once. I don't know if he ever had it in Japan, but he had it once with the Rangers like in 2015, I think. Or 2016, maybe? One of those years. Um, the one good thing, though, is that a stress reaction is more of a bone issue than it is a ligament. a ligament issue. It was the same thing Charlie Tilson had that we were talking about before the show. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he had that stress fracture, and then he hurt the other foot as a result of that. It just takes rest or rest. Yeah. I mean, or just rest. obviously it sucks because they were, I mean, they were counting on you know, getting that boost for at least the postseason. Yeah, um, yeah. And then they had Mike Montgomery, who's been filling as filling in as the fifth starter, and he went down a couple of days earlier. So Tyler Chatwood had to come back, and he had to be in the rotation. And then he started <laughs> and walked like five guys in three innings and was bad. And then I uh, so yeah. as a good credit to our guy, Patrick Mooney, not the athletic, not the athletics Patrick Mooney, Patrick Mooney, but sports mockery's Patrick Mooney. He actually pointed mm -hmm. out, Right after Montgomery went down, he's like, "Well, the Cubs are actually going to be in deep shit if there's like one more injury." And then two days later, Hugh Darvish has that setback. So, I mean, they still have. Let's see here. They still have nine days for the uh, waiver trade trade deadline. Here, they could maybe go after somebody else. I don't know who. James Shields. Well, I hey. see. I, people people say that. I don't know. Do you really want James Shields? Uh, at this point, they just need someone who's not Tyler Chatwood. He, James Shields has quality starts. He eats innings. He's exactly what the Cubs need right now. Yeah, you know, you're you're not wrong about that. I Here's just, the thing: uh, they're only going to take him if the White Sox cover all that money because they're not going to go over the luxury tax because they already picked up Daniel Murphy. Yeah, Ooh. but I think, but I, but you only have to pick up a month of that, a month of James Shields. I think it's. Right. I, the Cubs are like very close. I don't know. Oh, how, yeah. I don't know the exact number, but that. I mean, oh, yeah. their offense. Their offense has scored before two before Wednesday night's game. They only scored one run five games in a row on solo home runs. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Chile but they did. made the moves knowing this. They they would you agree, Aldo, that they almost telegraphed these injury issues by getting Murphy yesterday with Bryant? I mean, there's been no announcement I on think, Bryant. Well, no, I think that was more Edison Russell who went on the DL and he's that's, been that's true. he's had a hand he went on the DL early in the year. He came back. I think I think he's actually been playing through whatever through the injury. hand injury, the finger, knuckle, something. Mm -hmm. And he's absolutely sucked. He has any power that he had. He hit like 20, 20 home runs in his second year. In twenty sixteen, he had like eleven or twelve last year. This year, he hasn't hit a home run since June. Like he has five all year. Really? So I mean that obviously that injury has really scooted him up. Um, so I think that was more, Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant. I guess the only like good injury news because uh, everything is no news shit. right now with him. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the, I think he's taken. He's actually finally he's taken batting, batting practice the last couple of days, so that's good. Hmm. Yeah, and we're going to get to the, the Murphy trade in just a minute. The other big injury in Chicago was out of nowhere, and it seemed like it was like so like casually reported. 
mm-hmm. was Jose Abreu missed Copic Day. And a lot of people were like, well, welcome to the bigs, kid. We're going to take our best. Yeah, we're going to take our best offensive weapon best out, offensive of player, out of the lineup. And, uh, and not have our manager there either. God was crying because Jose Abreu was injured. That's why it ran. And uh, so they took him out, and it said just lower abdominal pain. And then all of a sudden, he had surgery. And it sounds like it was uh, what do you call it? Like a hernia. Yeah, when the tools go under the shed. Yeah, hernia. (laughs) And I was just like, oh, shit. Like, that's surgery. And they say two weeks. I think he'll be fine. It's just. You never, you never like to see that. And kind of like what Aldo said, there goes the 100 RBI mark for the first five seasons. Yeah, Unless he just goes on a tear in September. Right. Yeah, it's going to be rough. Well, I mean, he could. But what is he still like? He's still like t- more, like just under 30 away and three home runs away. Mm-hmm. I thought it was 30 home runs that he had to get to, but, but maybe it's 20. Is, is he going to be around the team? Is A Rod going to. Gonna call him out for not heading to Scottsdale. Luckily, luckily, we don't have any Sunday. You know, <laughs> yeah, luckily, ESPN doesn't know that the White Sox exist. No, no, <laughs> they World, they keep forgetting. And World Series never World happened. Yeah, all that shit. None of that has should happen. So wait, so who's playing? First it's only now? who's in first place in the AL Central. Oh, who's playing first base for the, now that Abreu? Oh, uh, it was Matt Davidson yesterday. They just brought up Jose Rondon. And Rondon. Was Davidson yesterday, but then Nikki Delmonico Del can play. Nikki Handsome has been playing first, and that's why some people are justifying that this would be a good time to bring up Aloy because then you can put Aloy in the outfield and have <laughs> Nikki start getting reps at first base. Because I'll tell you what, right now, as much as I love Matty D and Matt Davidson, I do love you. You're not a first baseman, bro. You are just... It, he's not a first not. baseman. He's not a third baseman. What is he? DH. DH? That's it. Okay, he's against Martinez maybe, for his entire career. Maybe 16 home runs a year. Against one team. <laughs> he, hit, he hit one against the... What was it? The Twins the other day? Didn't he have eight in the first month against Kansas City? And he has only 16 now? I'm telling you, the White Sox, the White Sox have just traded him to Kansas City. Like back in May. <laughs> You know, they've got a lot of flexibility in that lineup and, and on that bench. I mean, you could move Daniel Polka to first base and you could have him. You know, you'd have some serious power in that lineup. Imagine oh, if by you the had... way, Nuke, I, I laughed at you last week, but Daniel Polka, rookie of the year? No, he's not, he's not rookie <laughs> of the year. I saw some of those numbers. He is, he's he's I mean, notable. He's he's notable. I just don't. Gleyber came, Torres I mean, he, is going to take He came it. out of nowhere. Yeah. He's the 108 player of the year. Definitely. Uh, I think... Worship I think him. He's... I don't think he's hitting for enough average, which he is still hitting for a little bit of average. I mean, he's just a power uh, powerhouse. Like, he, he, he hits balls. He smushes balls. Mm-hmm. Like, just incredibly hard. But I, I think if Gleber Torres qualifies, he runs away with it. <laughs> So, but Jose Abreu, I mean, like if you get, if you, if, you know, in the next two weeks, Jose's out, you can put Polka, platoon Polka at first, possibly he's athletic enough to handle it. You you could have Polka, have a sale Garcia who I'm, I'm still considering an, a, a power hitter. Who's not really, <laughs> um, but you know, he's like, he's like a, a really strongly built like slap yeah, hitter. Yeah, slap hitter. He's, you know, he's Contact like, he's Jason Hayward basically. You expect you see that big frame, yeah, and like just no power. Yeah, well, I th- I think that's why they can't trade him. I think that, and, and I just don't think that's what it's why I can't find value in him. So you hold by on the way, to him. By the way, Jose Abreu, twenty-two home runs, seventy-eight RBIs. So he's only twenty-two RBIs out. You can oh, do that in a month if you, if you go on a string. The hundred ribbies, but I think the thirty and a hundred. I think that's gonna that's thirty and a hundred is not gonna. Yeah, yeah, you gotta hit eight eight more home runs. Nope, it has been done before. It has. I just hope he gets better. This is again. I've said it a million times. It's pretty much a lost season. So a guy like him, have the surgery, get better, get to where you need to be, be ready for next year. 
So I, I think care they still about. have him for two more years. So right. So I'm good with it. I mean, it just sucks. I love Jose, so I hope he feels better. And but. and like we were talking about before the but you know but before the show was <clears throat> that if it is a hernia, that's troublesome for just swinging. Yes, that can be painful. So yeah. sounds terrible. Well, hopefully, it, it's exactly what they're saying it is. But yeah, and we'll see. The hey, Adam big... Engel hit a home run today, so maybe he's a power hitter <laughs> now. Put the statue yeah. out in center. Adam Engel's been playing Put... it since we've like oh, really talked shit about him. <laughs> hey, I told you so. You still want to? You still want to demote him? That's why. That's why Eloy's not coming up. Adam Engel. <laughs> no, he's, he's making Although a case. everything that was just said in the last three minutes on the show is complete bullshit. <laughs> Adam Engel. <laughs> <laughs> Get him out of here. Adam Engel, he's the new he's your power hitter now. Oh, yeah? Oh, wow. Yeah. the butter. <laughs> so the other big deal. Transition. The other big deal that I don't think a lot of people saw coming were the Cubs claimed notorious Cub killer Daniel Murphy off waivers, and it cost them a prospect. Was it a prospect in cash? Prospect and cash. And uh, first game in a Cubs uniform, batting leadoff, playing second. So, yeah, I mean, it's a good bet for a Cubs offense that obviously has been struggling. He's not very well liked in Chicago, let alone around the league, but <laughs> it's kind of like a whole A.J. Brzezinski. If the guy's just been beating the hell out of you for years – Glad to have him on your team. It's uh, it's uh, Jim Edmonds. Jim Edmonds in 2008, the Cubs got him, and I mean, I saw that comparison Scott a lot. Spezio in the Mets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, Jim Edmonds. It was the last like one that I remember. I mean, the other. I mean, the last like. Obviously, there was Chapman. Mm-hmm. Like, fan base was split on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, before that, obviously, it was Milton Bradley, who was just the shit human being. Um, <laughs> but like, dumb. aside from like anything outside the baseball field, was. Jim Edmonds back in 2008 and I mean he I like as a like a teenage kid like starting to become a like a big into sports I hated Jim Edmonds just that fucking grin on his face and hmm, all of yes. a sudden I was like hey go Jim Edmonds so <laughs> number Daniel Murphy <laughs> Here, here's the thing though I don't like that like I guess there is that element of oh he like killed the Cubs in 2015 when he was with the Mets He's been destroying them, like with the Nationals. Like I don't, I don't care about that. Like the people who, the Cubs fans who are upset about the Daniel Murphy trade, isn't because he's a Cubs killer. It's because of his the his, his thoughts video. on the quote gay lifestyle. That's right. like let's not confuse what this is about. It's not because he was a Cubs killer. Right. It's because people don't like that he's hiding behind his religion to like right. hate a group of people. <laughs> Like that's the reason why it's not which is because, a, oh, which he, is a legit reason not to like somebody. Yeah, I mean it's fine. I'm like I I think I saw her like if if you don't want to hate him for that, fine, don't. But like don't be mad that other fans hate him that do hate him for that. Like they have a pretty good reason why. Mm-hmm. Is there any hypocrisy in in or any difference? I guess, and that's why I'm saying hypocrisy in. In embracing Araldus Chapman and his oh, domestic abuse thing. stuff, think, and then and then serious. railing on Daniel Murphy for his no, I think what? a lot of people hated that trade too. Right. To be fair, a lot of the same people that were railing on the Chapman yeah. deal are now railing on the Murphy deal. It's the and same I mean, crowd. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had the Addison like a, a big portion of Cubs fans like once the the domestic violence uh, allegations came out. Like, well, like, through a third party on Instagram last year mm-hmm. against Addison Russell, he's had a huge drop off in like support from Cubs fans. Yes. Hmm. So, I mean, I, obviously, it's not every single one. Like, I mean, Cubs fans. That's a, <laughs> that's a novel approach. <laughs> I, I mean, obviously, it's not every fan. Like, you still have. Oh, right, right, like, right. Your, I'm not even going to say meatballs because I'm like. No, I'm and, and it's probably. One where I'm like, I did I. I, I it doesn't matter what I think. I'm I mean, I'm not gay, it doesn't matter, it doesn't but you can still sympathize with other people. Right. Like, right. you know, the guy I mean his comments were like what he said was pretty bullshit. You can look it up. 
But yeah, I mean, I mean that's that that's your typical. Again, we talked about this a little bit before the show. That's your that is like your scripted typical religious mm-hmm. like just feed feed. Yeah, like I don't statement. I don't agree with you. I'll still like I don't you. Agree with your lifestyle, but right. I mean, you know, it doesn't mean I don't like you as a as a human being. Like I'll pray for you. Yeah. And it's you like know? you know, save your prayers, you know? Yeah. For the love of God, if you listen to the show, stop calling it a lifestyle. Anyways. <laughs> in terms of in terms of baseball, I mean it's it's um I mean it's back up for Addison Russell went on the DL. So it's back up for him. Chris Bryant's been taking bad in practice for a couple of days. They're hoping he's gonna come back soon. But if he's not 100 percent or if he's still like not good, I guess that's back up for him then too. You move bias to short. You have Mur- that's the thing that there's Mur- a lot Daniel- of flexibility that he yeah. offers. But Don- but Daniel Murphy like sucks as a defender. He's no no. He's a um, second baseman, and you tolerate him as a second baseman, yeah. like Chase Utley used to be for the Phillies. Well, like you just hope you just hope that he hits. Yeah. Here's my other train of thought though. With this, does this move indicate to either one of you that? Chris Bryant might not be as healthy as people think he is. To me, yeah. I still think it's more on. But I think you're right about Addison Russell. Yeah. I think it's more Addison Russell. Okay. But I also think it's. But I think it could be. Yeah. yeah. But I think that they're also covering their ass if Bryant isn't good. So I mean, it works both ways, I guess. Right. So it's, at, a win. it's a win for the Cubs. Can come we on, Zoe, don't get me down. You Jarvis is already out. Stop. Stop with these negative thoughts on Chris Bryant. <laughs> I'm just saying, though, because I think, it, you know, all off the field shit aside, just strictly just on baseball. baseball, this is was an A plus move for the, the Cubs, mm-hmm. especially with KB and Limbo. You got Russell going uh, down. Russell going down on, and he, they only put him on the 10 day DL, but I got a feeling this is going to go a lot longer than 10 days. Mm-hmm. I really do. And I think in an offense that needed a little. You know, kicking the ass, a bat like Daniel Murphy leading off for you is a pretty so – you could do worse. You could do, <laughs> you could do a lot worse. I mean, there were, and you I really mean, didn't – I think he gave up a very high-risk, high-reward prospect. So I don't think it was – you didn't overpay for him. Right. Is he a rental? Is he a free agent at the end of this year? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I so mean – Strictly, this is – the only criticism of this move are his personal beliefs in homosexuality. That's it. Otherwise, Cubs win. Cubs win. Yeah, I mean it's a it's, it's a good pretty, move. Yeah, on paper, and, and, and it's he a made good two move. very prescient moves with bringing in um, Cole, Cole Hamels, who I think did you uh, you might have brought it up too, Nuke, who was like, oh man, he could be like this year's uh, Justin Verlander. And yeah. so far, he's, he's been, been so far, yeah. that. Yes, he's been very good and not I think unexpected. That was a great move. I just, yeah, I mean, I'm fine with everything. The only part of this whole thing that pissed me off was people that just kept misusing the word lifestyle. But other than that, I'm, <laughs> I was good with the move. I'm good. You know, I just, I think, again, strictly baseball speaking, I think it was a great move for the Cubs. I really okay. do. So, um, By the my, way, big here's a big and before you get over there, uh, Cubs Phillies series this upcoming weekend, right? Or no, Labor Day weekend. Labor Day. Labor Day weekend. Yeah. That's actually a pretty big series. It Absolutely. is. I think I'm not. I don't and know they if Arietta's well. Gonna... Yeah. I wonder if Arietta's going to start. I'm not sure about that. I don't know how it lines up. I didn't look that up, but I mean, you got Hamels, who was a Philly for the Cubs. You got Arietta, who was a Cub for the Phillies. Mm-hmm. Both fighting. Well, not Cubs really aren't fighting for first place, but the Phillies are fighting for first place still in the NL East. This could be a. I don't know if it's a necessarily a precursor or like kind of like a preview of the playoffs here, but it could be. I think it would be. And both offenses I, are pretty much like <laughs> hit or miss. So. I think it would be like a preview of the NLDS, uh, if, like with if the standings right now. Yeah. But yeah, that mean the Phil- the Phillies, the Phillies and the Braves. I think I've said it like all year. White Sox fans, that's what you want to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No. I no. Hundred percent. So, with that, let's get into our interviews here. Uh, Nuke put together some nice interviews that we're gonna roll right here, and we'll be right back after this. I didn't say their names because we don't know who they are. 
<laughs> and you you kind of promised two, and I'm like, maybe we'll only have one. But when we come back, see if you can splice this in. We 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 never mentioned that one tweet about um, the most fastballs thrown in a start um, in Major League Baseball this year over 95 miles an hour. Did you guys see that one? No, well, let's talk about it. So thank you very much. We really appreciate you coming on the show. As always, open invite to come on. Um, so, Noop, before we came back on the air here, you had an interesting set you'd like to share with the class. Yeah, uh, something we forgot to mention with Kopech, one of these these great little, little ditties on what he actually did in that start in only two innings. The most fastballs thrown over 95 miles an hour in a start this season is by Mike Fultonevich with the Braves. And I think he threw like 79 or 75. Now, Michael Kopech last night, I believe he threw 41 <laughs> fastballs over 95 in two innings. Wow. I mean, he threw 52 pitches. <laughs> 52 pitches, yeah, right. He was pretty amped up, though, so... Yeah, true, but we know he we know he's got that plus 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 fastball. Right. Oh, by and the way, you mentioned you mentioned the sweat earlier. Didn't he have like a couple issues down in AAA this yes, year? Yes, he uh, did. Like gripping That's right. the ball with sweat. <laughs> he would go and change jerseys in the middle of the game. <laughs> That's how he's the, the, the white the White Sox need to have that handy for him. Sweat scandal. Sweat <laughs> sweat scandal. So he, he had a pretty strong V going too. I think him and Rodon are on the same page. I didn't know that was a thing with him. I thought it was just jacked was up right his opening night. I, I don't know, but his chest, Heavy sweater, chest was Heavy pretty sweater. darn red. He was sweating. It didn't look like – he looked like – I don't know, man. He he is a physical specimen. Guy's a monster. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, tur- you're turning on Zoe again. He's, he's blushing. <laughs> <laughs> he's just sipping on that scissor. Nope. I'm too busy <laughs> drafting Cooper Cup. All right, wait. wait there you Let's go. Get, go. Give us a draft update. Who's on your team so far? Oh, man, my team's good. Is your quarterback so? Uh, Drew Brees, yeah. old, old reliable. Which was a forty-year-old quarterback. I had him last year, and he was pickles and dimes. Drew they Brees. run the ball now with Kamara and uh, Ingram. I got that covered. I got Kamara too. Mm, anytime the Sa- anytime the Saints score a touchdown, I'm getting money. So we got <laughs> Brees, Thalen, Jarvis Landry, Kamara, Hunt, and then I got the Cleveland tight end Nagoku. Uh, who else we got? We got Golden Tate. We got Houston's defense. We got Marquise Goodwin. Uh, we got Ronald Jones II, the rookie running back in Tampa Bay. And then we just got Cooper Cup. Wow. If I, that sounds like a 10 Cooper team Kai. league to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Loving every side second bets for days. All right, so what, what are we going to argue about now? Yeah, what so, are we arguing about? All right. Going in hard to second. Go bring go ahead, Nuke, paint the picture on on why this is a thing right now. Like well, what, I, what happened to bring this up? Do I have all right. The the tweet emerged mm-hmm. of like a nineteen seventies game between Cincinnati and somebody else. And it was just like a it was a guy going in hard to second. But he went in hard, like didn't even slide. He just basically threw his body into the waist of the second. I think, I think this might have been 1990, 1990 World Series, Oakland no. versus the Reds. Because it's Oakland and the Reds. 1990, really? I I think Go that ahead, I yes. think they played in the World Series that year. I think, I mean. Was that Candlestick? No. Uh, well, no, anyway. No, the Coliseum. Here it is. Um, the, the A's. That's the Reds. You're, maybe you're right. Maybe it is. Uh, maybe it is the '90s. I don't know. But this guy for the Reds went in hip high, hip high, with, with, with good his hip, hip tackle. I mean, it yeah, was a full literally. fledged body assault. <laughs> <laughs> he threw his body into the, like I said, hip high, into the second baseman and took him out and prevented the double play. That's the way baseball is played. No, it's that's football, dude. You're fucking up your sports. <laughs> your to your your response was great. That's a penalty in football. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he just you can't do that, dude. You first Why of all, second baseman didn't get hurt. Okay, did not get hurt. <laughs> we don't know that. Didn't go spikes we up. Don't know. It was only a four second video. 
Right. He, he was getting up. There was nothing there. That I had a broken rib. We got, well, he could have had a broken rib. Dislocated hip. Yeah. I mean, there's so many bad things that come from that, that can come from that, dude. Like, you can't. Okay. You can't do that. All right, fine. We can't do that. We can't make baseball tough. Okay, so here's the thing. Great again. Okay, here's the thing. If if you want to allow that, I'm fine with it. But you have to allow everything else too. You have What's to allow the spikes up. You have to allow hitting. But then you can't. But then pitchers can't bitch about players bat flipping. Then it's just lawlessness. It's anarchy. Love it. <laughs> Good, no, no rules. Good. I mean, I mean, what's the what's the difference? And I've always said, if a pitcher gets to throw a fastball at a player or at a position player, that position player should be able to go after that pitcher with whatever weapon he chooses. Just get one free swing in with his bat. I, mean, I don't think anybody says. I don't think there's any law that says or any rule that says that the batter has to drop the bat before he charges the mound. Yeah, right? it's called. I'm all for it. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of like I, I think it's more of a courtesy. It's like dropping the gloves. Gloves. No, that's assault, brother. That's okay, well, assault so with a deadly so weapon. What so is throwing a hundred mile per hour fastball at a guy's head? Yeah, Could no, that? yeah. That's assault it's, too. All right, so let's talk about this. Let's let's segue into the Urena's uh, Dude, Miami versus Acuna deal. Did did just came out today? Did mm-hmm. Urena's deserve? The or not the what is it six game suspension? Yeah, I think it was six games. I think he misses two starts. Is that right? No, I think he just missed like one. Yeah. So basically, he won Adam because he slid into second too hard. No, no, no but just the showmanship, four Five. home runs. <laughs> oh. And he pimped the shit out of the out of those home runs. Good, he should. Yeah. Yes, he did. <laughs> He's good no, player. he shouldn't. That's some baller shit. How yeah. do you should? No, here. Okay, here's the thing though. Okay, if if Urena gets to do that, or if you want to back him up on doing that, then what can a position player do if a pitcher does the equivalent? If a pitcher has like four straight starts of like shutout baseball against your team, what can a position player do to get back at him? Bunt in the seventh inning of a no hitter. So. Oh. How often is that gonna come I'm, up? I'm, uh, <laughs> never, never, That's not right. not I, often. I want it fair um, on both sides. The right. player but it, always but it, gets screwed, and but it never will be. It never is fair, and it's not. It it's skewed actually. I mean, like you know, when you talk about success rates and stuff, you know, the pitcher is always more successful than the hitter. But you know, no, I see your point, Aldo, and I agree do with you, you that it's like, what do, do <laughs> what do the <laughs> What do the position players have that they can do back? Well, you know, the the unwritten rules that we all hate here, except <laughs> me. Uh, you know, it it you're supposed to use them in a certain way. Did Urena's have the right to throw at Acuna? I don't think so. I no. think that was a, a, a poor choice. Why is he throwing at him? Because he's doing good at his job. It, it, that it was would have. Thing. He threw at him because Acuna was being a good baseball player. Right. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> I mean, it's so much more effective to hammer him inside and move him off the plate. And if it grazes him, fine. F- listen, as a hitter, four pitches buzzing my waist and my chin pisses me off more than if I get drilled in the hip. Because mm-hmm. I, I get drilled in the hip, that's one pitch. It hurts. Whatever. I go, and I know. I I know why I was hit. You but if you keep hammering bone. me. Eh, it rarely. I mean, unless you get hit, hit in the hand. I think that's where Okuna got hit. It was like the wrist area. He did get hit in the hand, and you, oh no, no, the elbow. It was the oh, elbow, okay. and he was fine. He was day to day. Um, but no, I, and I I agree with you. If you're if you're gonna drill somebody, you drill them right in the right in the schnookus, right in the ass. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. I needed I needed you to clarify. Shooketh. <laughs> Shooketh. <laughs> I'm not even sure that's the right word. I am shooketh. (laughs) But anyway. Ooh. Bias just hit a home run. MVP train is back on. No, he's definitely. Who hit the home run? Bias. So that's what I would say. Buzz him. Buzz him four times. Throw behind him. So that that, that sends a serious message. Now, when you throw behind someone, you're going to get chucked out of the game, which sucks. But send that message. You don't have to hurt again. 
So you so you don't hurt the player by hitting. You don't hit him. You get chucked. But you hit him. You don't get chucked. <laughs> do you think? Do you guys think Kopek is a old school guy? I think he is, and he did it actually. Like, oh, that's right. Night. I forgot his last. Yeah, no, Kopek's a hundred percent the type of dude that'll drill somebody for a teammate. Oh, I mean the C- Cubs and Sox still have a series left. Okay. No, Any yeah. fireworks go down? No. No. Kopech throws at uh, Baez? I don't think he's got any reason to. No. Well, why if Baez uh, pimps a home run? Never know. It doesn't or, matter. Or, 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 or Nuke. I think Nuke, our, like, our first heated debate was a year ago when John Lackey completely lost his control. That's right. That's right. I, wa- I was completely fine with the White Sox throwing at the Cubs, but I wanted them to throw at John Lackey. Yeah, right, the right. And they totally pushed out on it. <laughs> but but no and and I I don't I don't disagree with you. I think especially John John Lackey would, would have been the first person in the dugout and said, "You better fucking throw at me." You know, like that <laughs> meatball would have been out there like, "Throw at me," you know. Um they could have done it. They, they just you, would have loaded the bases. Just don't do it. You you <laughs> don't throw at Lackey. And I think part of that also was like, "Why not? Why do you wait 3 innings to do it?" Was it, did, didn't they? They didn't happen early in the game, and then they waited like well, no. till the end of the game. Well, no, it was Lackey lost his controller or whatever, and he hit like three guys in a row. Three in, guys like, in a row, yeah. In like the fifth inning, and then he was up like fourth or fifth in the bottom of the fifth, and the Cubs got one hit, and then there's two outs, and then Lackey was on deck, mm-hmm. I think, or no, or Lackey was L- Lackey was up to play, and if they hit him, they would have loaded the bases for like the leadoff guy. Yeah. Yeah, no. I, I mean, see, here, here's the thing is like when you hit someone, like there are times where you hit that person the next time they come around, and there are times when you hit somebody else, which I know sounds ridiculous. <laughs> but like, for example, if I bunt up 10 runs and I get a hit, the guy behind me is getting screwed. And that sends a message to me like, you want to act like an asshole, we're going to take out your teammates. And they're going to have to come into you because they can't argue with that. They're going to be like, why the hell did you do that? You know, like I got drilled because you made a stupid mistake, you know? Mm -hmm. And then there are times where like Chase Utley goes in hard at second, takes a guy out. Chase Utley gets drilled the next time. You know, you don't drill the next guy. Okay. Here's a question. Cause like they took that out because of Chase Utley, the whole, you know, there's no more neighborhood play at second. You have to step on the bag and you can't. You can't just like barrel into guys anymore. Right, right. So, do you think there comes a day with? I mean, we've seen in the, in the NFL now where I mean, you can't like fucking hit a guy anymore. Do you think MLB eventually like actually comes down hard? Like, if you throw at a guy, like it's not just a six game suspension. It's like you miss half the season or something to like no, just try to take that out. I think because because there's always plausible deniability, you know. Like pitchers are supposed to know, but there are times where you just lose control and you hit a guy. And if it happens coincidentally in that weird circumstance that you do mm-hmm. hit hit a guy, yeah, I get, that's always a tough part because you can always go with it wasn't on. Yeah, because you see him do it. You see him do it now, and none of them <laughs> admit doing it, which kind of pisses me off. It's totally what they do, where they don't like come out and like you don't air out your dirty laundry in the in the press. You do it in the you know in the clubhouse. I hate it. If you hit a guy, say, like, yeah, I fucking hit him. <laughs> well, I think they don't do it. He I did this. I didn't want. So I hit him. And then they get, like, fined for saying that. It's like, you can't admit it. By the so, way, I think I think uh, I didn't know this until they showed it uh, the last time that comes around ESPN. But I think I would have hated Cole Hamels back when he hit Bryce Harper. Like, as a rookie, I think they showed it. Yeah. It was, like, his first at-bat against the Phillies or whatever. And Cole, had, Cole Hamels hit him. <laughs> But the funny part is Cole Hamill's through like 92, which is right. like, <laughs> now it's like 86. No, no I love Cole Hamill's. Exactly. You want that bulldog mentality. Because you know he's going to go to, he's going to go to war for you guys. Just keep, keep throwing up those zeros. So let's, should, should, should we segue to the end? I mean, I'm like really stepping in here for you, though. I know. And I appreciate it because I might and, die. Because I just oh. want to, I just want to add this. Uh, Omar Vizquel is quite an artist. Yes. He, does, he like doodles on the, on the, he made up uh, his own language part. tonight. He did. And then he, it was like warthogs that they were mm-hmm. playing. And he, he wrote war thogs, <laughs> like yep. separate words. I'm like, go get the war thogs. Yep. 
Um, it's like people maybe who maybe uh, I'm the only one that found that funny. No, I found I appreciated it. It's people who spell cologne like colon. Yes. <laughs> my boyfriend. I got my boyfriend this night as colon. It sounds like colon. Oh, <laughs> sexy. All right. Well, do you guys got any uh, final thoughts here before we wrap? Uh, the Cubs just hit back to back home runs. They're back. Eight runs against the Tigers. They're back, baby. They're back. My voice even cracked. They're back. All they needed was that Daniel Murphy spark. Oh, God. Just that tiny little spark. God damn, God damn it. He's going to get the credit for it. God. Oh, yeah. 100%. Well, I don't have anything. I I, I wasted myself in this whole because, time. Is, is well, Eloy I appreciate it. Is Eloy coming up this year? Yes or no? no? Oh, Eloy? No, not coming up this year. Will not happen. And I'm I'm saying no. earlier next year. I'm saying no, and it's not the cold medicine. I honestly think he's not coming up this year. So I can't wait to say I told you so. God, that's gonna be the worst part. Oh, by the way, right. Nuke, we're we're still waiting on Nick Madrigal. You promised him. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, yeah. Well, <laughs> seven months. We'll see. Month we'll see half. if I can get him before the end of the year. Let's go, and I'm definitely gonna be telling him all the shit you've been saying about him. <laughs> Uh, well, then I'm glad that you're not going to be on the phone call. Mm, maybe I find my way on that time. <laughs> um, is that so? Who's who's ringing in right now? Who is heavily breathing small? into the phone right now? No, this isn't so. Oh, by the way, hey, I think this is the wrong number, but is this the show where you kept saying this guy was too short to make it to the big leagues? Uh, Matt oh, and Nuka? Matt, Matt and Nuka. You yeah, said I read yeah. that you were writing. He was too short, right? Oh, I'm sorry. This could be the wrong show. I don't know. It could be a different Matt and Nuka altogether. Sorry, I'll hang up. We, I'll may, hang have up to, listen. we may have to send Zoe down to Winston Salem and do an in person interview in, in Paris. Person. Let's go. After you pop bottles on my front lawn. Well, that, that, next that's year when Eloy comes oh, up. Matt, Nuke, Nuke, I just saw your Twitter, Abby. You like you look you look like a sir in your Taking that hard slide at second. That's right. Yeah. See, that's why oh, I'm a fan. Face. Yep. See, <laughs> Nuke's just trying to alpha us right now, all day right. with these pitchers and all this other shit. So I'm gonna have to find like a hardcore Matt Swaski on St. Rita High School sophomore <laughs> basketball team. <laughs> I did so, see you. You did so, put up a team photo. That was, I was in like fifth grade, dude. So would you wear? Would you wear the white T-shirt underneath? Yeah, with the cutoff JJ Reddick sleeves. Yes, I did. <laughs> I totally did. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Oh my That's god, I just got like a horrible full body chill. Holy shit! All right, so before I die, it's God uh, touching you. Yeah, let's uh, <laughs> let's wrap this up. Yeah, before because you just opened that last saying you said to a whole nother conversation. Anyways, <laughs> so for <laughs> oh god, Matanuko. That's Aldo Soto. I'm Matt Zawaski. If I'm not dead, we'll have another show, great show for you next week. Make sure you're following us on Twitter at Pinwheels Ivy Pod. And uh, yeah, be good to each other, Chicago. Enjoy Copic start on Sunday against Detroit. Hopefully, we'll get to see a full six innings, five six, innings. Yeah, six innings, 22 no shots. No hitter or no hitter. Yeah, why not? I like it. Here we go. Expectations. Oh, ooh, let's do, yeah, let's do an unnecessary. Uh, Let's see prediction if this happens. Holy shit. Kopik throws a no hitter on Sunday. This is a. <laughs> it's on. It's on. Rebuild. Are you calling it? No hitter? Yeah, I'm calling it, but all those going to edit that part out. And then if no. it does happen, he'll be like, oh, Zoe said this on Wednesday. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, fellas. Well, I will talk to you guys next week. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening. Make sure you're subscribing, rate, reviewing the show. And if, as always, hit us up on Twitter if you just want to shoot the shit or tell new send us some questions how scary he looks in his baseball card picture, or send us some questions and we'll answer them on the show. I think All I right. went viral. <laughs> <laughs> so no, you, you just got a disease. All right, <laughs> <laughs> we will talk to you guys next week. Peace. Uh, oh, I got to draft a kicker real quick. Shit. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, by the way, I meant to ask, how's how are we doing um, with the analytics? Are we getting some views? I haven't seen weeks? the last two weeks. Of it. Um, From what I've gathered, it's gone up every week, which is all good. That's good.
Uh, you could stop the live feed too. Oh shit! I always forget to do that. People don't need to watch me die.